Well, hello again, Tom. Hey there, JC. You want to know a secret? Sure. It's our first episode. Was, was that the secret? That was the secret. Oh. It's not a good Cause... secret because you already knew it. Yeah, I kind of already knew that. I don't think I know what secret means. No. That's it, right. It's an it's an antiperspirant. <laughs> yeah, because I'm sweating bowels over here. Any, all right, that we're, all right. It's moving on. For a man. <laughs> anyway, uh, welcome to the premiere episode of Cheaters Never Pin. I'm JC. I'm Tom. And uh, we're here to talk about the graps, pro graps, pro wrestling. And you joined at the right time. Uh, cause it's mania season, Tom. No, well, it's, it's rumble season right now. Mania is still a couple months from now. Yeah, but mania season starts with the rumble. That's what Michael Cole told me on Monday. Michael Cole's a dirty liar. No, he's not. Shut your filthy mouth. Anybody with facial hair with that little, just right below the lip thing. That's yeah. You can't trust anyone like that. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know how to transition out of that, so I'm just going to say, hey, here's what we're doing tonight on the show. Uh, yeah, we don't have any cool theme music or anything we don't. like that yet. We're so, gonna... so if you have ideas for cool theme music or ideas for just an opening, feel free to you know let us know through the various methods of contact that we'll have, and I'm sure we have them. Oh, yes, right, I'll Jason? tell you. I'll tell you right now. Uh, you can email us at cheatersneverpin at gmail.com that's a great way to send us files like music electronic and, mail and better artwork which is already being worked on so that's good uh you can hit us up on twitter at cheaters never pin cheaters in vr pin because you know twitter's got to be a fascist with their character count uh you can also find us on facebook we have a page there cheaters Ooh. never pin my mom will be excited yes so give us a like give us that big blue thumbs up uh, and you've already found us and you're listening to us, but we're available on iTunes, Google Play, TuneIn, and Spreaker and Stitcher. So you can find us uh, anywhere finer and fine, finer. Jesus, I'm already putting us down. Fine podcasts are available. It's okay. I don't know what most of those things are. It's all right. Just they're apps that the, the kids are into them these days. I guess we need a Snapchat then too, right? As long as we can use filters that make my head look huge. I'm just er. I'm just sending that nude picture of Seth Rollins to everybody with it. <laughs> that's what Snapchat's for, right? Yeah, I'm hey. pretty sure. Yeah. So as you can guess, it is the uh, it is the Thursday before Royal Rumble on Sunday, and uh, that's what we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to talk about the Royal Rumble and the giant weekend uh, that is now surrounding it. We're going to go through the card, uh, tell you our predictions. We have a couple of special guests tonight too. Uh, Mike and Derek from Section328.com and the Cheaters Never Win podcast. You may, you may have heard of them. Yes, you, you may know who they are. Uh, they'll be here to go through the Rumble match itself, uh, and then we'll break down TakeOver as well and get you ready for that. Uh, and then anything else we can think of is how we'll close this, which in probably just as poor a fashion as we started tonight. Luckily, there'll be no discussion of UK wrestling or... Japanese supercards. That's so. right. Folks, we'll, we'll, we'll we, keep it at a easier level for all of us to comprehend. We are full mainstream tonight. <laughs> Woo! Woo-hoo. Anyway, uh, so, Tom, give me, before we start running through the, the card for the Royal Rumble on Sunday, go ahead and give me your kind of your overall impressions of, of, of this card and what you think and how you think that show is going to turn out. Um, I mean, the Rumble's always been the actual rumble match with other stuff thrown in. Um, thanks to the brand split, we have two world title matches. We've got one tag title match with Cesar and Sheamus taking on Gallows and Anderson. Um, and we've got Rich Swan. I mean, there are actually seven other matches uh, scheduled so far. I say so far because We've we've got a show that's technically starting at five with the pre-show oh, and it's going to last until eleven. Ah, maybe later because you know they did that at Mania last year. Yeah, we'll just run over because. And looking at, I mean, between the two programs, NXT and um, the cruiserweight division, 
there's a lot of signed wrestlers. I mean, you had mentioned it earlier when we were talking through the rundown. This actually wouldn't be a bad time to bring back the 40-man rumble. But it's, I thought it was going to happen. but Because I looked, I went and kind of pulled out a spreadsheet and went, okay, here's the 22 guys that we've got so far. Who are the eight people that could be left? And I just started pulling names off the WWE.com roster of just people that were listed there. And I, I mean, and I even took out names of people like that were not necessarily everyday 205 live cruiserweights. Like I just kind of like grabbed the main, like four or five guys like Gallagher and Rich Swan, that type of thing. And I'm like, there's like 40 people that we could throw in these eight spots. And that's not including people that maybe formerly wrestled for another promotion as of last month or uh, WWE legends that always seem to kind of crop up people that you've missed and wondered if they were still alive or people that you didn't really miss, but they happen to live nearby. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there, there's still going to be a lot of content uh, potentially down the road. They'll, they'll throw in like maybe another, like four way tag team match or something like that. Cause there's a lot of tag teams available on the SmackDown roster. Again, throw in another cruiserweight match. Maybe this is one of the big four. So they're going to want to throw potentially anybody they can into the car to get them a paycheck. So yeah. I, I, I think we've got eight matches, including uh, the rumble with mm -hmm. two scheduled for the pre-show, but I don't think that's going to be it. I think we're going to see probably at least two more, if not more, for, again, a two-hour pre-show and a four-hour card. Yeah. I, they've got a really good lineup, and they needed it. Uh, as I said earlier, it's the beginning of Mania season. This is when people start coming back to the WWE. This is when people start coming back to the network, most importantly. Uh, so they've got to get their money and get them signed up. Uh, they also have to sell out the Alamo Dome, uh, which is a huge venue for them to run, especially right now, uh, as they want to try to start to build the big four pay-per-views into, you know, Mania, of course, will be on a level all its own, but they want SummerSlam, Survivor Series, and Rumble to be Mania light. Um, I wouldn't hold... I, I, I wouldn't be surprised to start seeing many kind of access events at all these in coming years. Um, but I think this card is great. I think uh, this is a really strong way to start the year. Fortunately, these co-branded pay-per-views, there's so much talent, they can do it. Uh, so I, I think we're in for a really good show on Sunday. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it. There's a lot of good matches. And I mean, and, and who doesn't love the Rumble? It's just, just with the countdowns and just the unpredictability and this year we've actually got a rumble that we honestly don't have what looks to be an obvious winner. Yep. And I'm kind of excited about that. For sure. Well, let's go down the card. Um, we'll start, I guess, with the pre-show matches, which uh, were both announced on Monday. Um, Cesaro and Sheamus take on uh, Gallows and Anderson for the tag team titles. Um, I, th they're going to retain. Also, it's on well, the pre-show. Who's going to watch it? Slash, who really... I feel bad saying who cares, but who really cares? Look, there are two referees assigned to this match, too. Ooh, that is true. All right. And I actually... I, I could see a title change coming up. Um, I mean, Cesaro and Sheamus, that, that kind of, like... That wacky... Uh, wacky, woo! Uh, that wacky, odd couple kind of grouping that they have together is fine. But, I mean, they're singles wrestlers. And it made for a cool story to build and to actually get the straps off of New Day. But I think they're transitional champions. And Cesaro and Sheamus are both in the Rumble. They're both listed as being part of the Royal Rumble. Whereas Gallows and Anderson are not... I mean, it's possible that Gallows and Anderson could end up showing up at the Rumble. I mean, Luke Gallows would do pretty well in the Rumble, I would think. Um, but I, I could see Gallows and Anderson taking the, especially after the shenanigans that happened at the last Raw, where wow. Gallows and Anderson did the face-like, <laughs> like, 
getting screwed out of the belt. So I, I, I don't know. Are we supposed to like I I don't know. It's it's very confusing. But uh, I could see Gallows and Anderson taking the belts. But yeah, I think creative has made Gallows and Anderson look like such idiots and goofballs and everything since their debut a year, almost a year ago at this point. Uh, there's there's no chance. The the issue with Gallows and Anderson is the fact that I I think Vince or H as the case may be went out and got them because they went and they got AJ and AJ is probably like oh you know you want these guys too because they looked like they wanted to get half the Bullet Club over at one time or another and they ended up getting three guys and for reasons no one will ever be able to explain to me they split the three of them up with the raw smackdown draft and in the process aj's looked great and great for him but gals and anderson have gone through about 18 different like gimmick like changes where they're goofy no they're serious no they're goofy again it's yeah they're kind of lost in neither direction and Honestly, I think in case a case like that, it may be just putting the belts on them may give them that direction. I don't know. I, I could see a title change coming. Okay. Uh, our other pre-show match at three o'clock in the morning when it starts <laughs> is uh, Sasha Banks versus Nia Jax. Uh, Nia doesn't like Sasha, Sasha, so she attacked her and hurt her knee, and Sasha's real not happy about it. And there's the storyline. Uh, Sasha, Sasha wins. Also, important storyline is that Sasha's tiny and Nia Jax is big. Oh, yeah, good point. David Goliath. Yeah, yeah Sa- Sasha, Sasha wins. Especially if Gallows and Anderson are taking the belts. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Sasha... I don't... I mean, Sasha should win, but I still want to see Sasha eventually get to... Uh, heal Sasha because that's where she excels so I could see her kind of going into this losing streak kind of thing and getting frustrated and just going off and getting pissed off and like maybe she takes a direction you know a downward direction and she sees Bailey getting the number one contender shots and potentially getting the title and seeing all of her success and Sasha just getting completely pissed off and turning against her and going that direction. So I, I can see, I, I think Sasha's going to win just because there are no female faces on raw or SmackDown actually for that matter, uh, outside of Bailey. But I could see a scenario where Nia Jax takes that win over Sasha, but I think Sasha's probably going to end up winning it anyway, yeah. but I'd like to see Nia Jax win. I just, don't, honestly don't think creative cares enough about them at this time to really put that much thought into it, which I really like what you said. Uh, but they, they're like, eh, it's a pre-show match. Who gives a shit? And they just put Nia and Sasha out there and put Sasha over. Yeah. I don't disagree with that. Yeah. Uh, I put what I wanted to see or what I could see, but yeah, realistically, yeah. it's what we're going to say. <laughs> right. All right, then we move on to the main card uh, announced on SmackDown Tuesday night. Uh, a six-woman tag match. Becky Lynch, Nikki Bella, and Naomi take on uh, the heel trio of Alexa Bliss, Mickey James, and Talia. Uh, I'm going to assume Bliss, Mickey James, and Natalia win here. Um, Because they're all involved in these singles feuds. And I can also see this leading to a women's elimination chamber match. Yeah, I, I could see that, I guess. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I think the faces need a win. I mean, just because Alexa and now Mickey James have been getting over on Becky and Becky's been, been made to look the fool for a while. And Nikki Bella's been getting her ass beat by Natalia. So I could see the faces going ahead and taking a win here, especially since this is probably going to get sandwiched in between, I don't know, probably the Owens Reigns and the Rumble maybe, or it's going to be a 
you know, a cool down match yeah. pretty much for the crowd. So they're going to probably want to put faces over. So I, I see Becky 